For the past two years, this freaking pandemic has taken all of our attention. And as a result, a few important things have been left unnoticed, like the 30-year anniversary of the Mercosur, the South American Free Trade Bloc, a milestone that should have been celebrated on March 26th of last year. Why should you care about that? Well, if you like Brazil or the South American continent, you should know that Mercosur has been the only agreement to successfully put an end to a historical dispute between Brazil and Argentina in the continent. Stay with me and I will explain you everything after the intro. If you're visiting the channel for the first time and as a result of one of YouTube's stimulus, my name is Mark Saint, I'm Brazilian from Sao Paulo and twice a week we offer you content about Brazil, be that it's food, dance, sports, movies or anything that can show how great this country is. Make sure to subscribe and click on the bell button to be informed whenever there's a new video out. We are here every Mondays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Brasilia time. Let's go to the video. Mercosul, or Mercosul as we say in Portuguese, is a southern free trade bloc whose aim is to bring development and integrate a few countries in South America. Which countries are we talking about? To answer that and show you more, the one and only Brad Zucca. Thanks, Mark. I gotta say, the introductions you make about myself are getting better and better. Keep it up. <laughs> Before we go on, I'd like to ask you guys who are visiting for the first time or who are already a member, a subscriber to the channel, better say, don't forget to visit our Instagram, which appears right here, and acquire one of your t-shirts, like this one, with a very handsome coaching. <laughs> don't forget, this way you are supporting the channel and helping us make more and more videos about this beautiful country of Brazil. I'm just really happy there's an air conditioner in my studio because Mark is outside suffering under this beautiful moon. <laughs> Mercosur state members are Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay. That is, the founding members plus Venezuela, which currently is suspended due to violations to the treaty. She has been a natty girl and violated a lot of human rights, so she's grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Bolivia is currently under analysis as to whether or not it will become a state member. The bloc also has associations with Chile, I love Chile, Colombia, Bolivia, Ecuador, Guyana, Peru, and Suriname. The bloc's territory is of 14,869,775 square kilometers, like my father's backyard. Its population is greater than 295 million people of great diversity and cultures. The bloc possesses the second biggest drinking water reserve on the planet, the Guarani Aquifer, which is located under the territory of the four founding state members, mainly Brazil. So in the future, if you want water, you have to buy with us. <laughs> If the bloc were a country, it would be the fifth economy of the world. The official languages of the bloc are Portuguese, of course, and Spanish. Back to you, Mark. On March 26, 2021, the Treaty of Asuncion turned 30 years old. On that same date, in 1991, Fernando Collor de Mello, the Brazilian president, and his counterparts in Argentina, Carlos Saumanen, from Uruguay, Luis Alberto Lacalle, and from Paraguay, Andres Rodriguez Pedotti, signed the agreement that gave life to the Southern Common Market, or Mercosul. The bloc emerged with a clearly commercial profile, initially aiming at the formation of a customs union. The aim was to increase the dynamism of exchange flows between the partner states, as well as to increase the competitiveness capacity of each of the partners in the international market. In short, Mercosul was born under the sign of the enormous economic challenges that the post-Cold War world imposed on developing countries especially. 
However, Brazil's integration with its neighbors was far from a natural process. The history of this complex relationship, especially with regard to the two largest countries in South America, was marked by alternating periods of dispute and cooperation. Since the consolidation of national independence, Brazil and Argentina saw each other as adversaries in the competition for regional leadership, sometimes bringing to the surface instabilities and tensions of all kinds, especially in the Rio de la Plata region. This rivalry, which today is basically restricted to soccer, has already led the two countries to a direct confrontation in the episode that became known as War of Cisplatina in Brazil and as Guerra del Brasil in Argentina. For a long time, this trust shaped the diplomatic orientations of both the countries, making the ratification of agreements tested over the decades unfeasible and constraining the most solid cooperation efforts. Brazil and Argentina were always competing and virtually taking different sides, as noted, for example, during the World War II, when Brazil supported the Allies, like the United States and Great Britain, and Argentina called itself neutral in the conflict. However, the two countries started getting along after the military regime in Brazil ended in 1985. The next step took place in a democratic environment. In 1985, President José Sarney and Ra Raul Lafonsin signed the Iguazu Declaration, marking not only the full political harmony between the two governments, but also launching the foundations of a strategic plan for binational integration, guys. It was clear that the two largest democracies in South America had definitely overcome the idea of seeing the other as geopolitical, military and economic threat. From then onwards, references to the words integration and friendship in the lexicon of the rulers became recurrent, thank God, and a creative effort was inaugurated around a common agenda with the following results. The integration and economic cooperation, or PICE, the nuclear cooperation protocol, and the integration cooperation and development ready. In 1991, finally, the debate on integration ended up spilling over beyond the Brazil-Argentina axis. The Treaty of Asuncion comes to life in this context of a redemocratized South America interested in accelerating economic modernization through synergistic efforts, which is why the two smaller partners are incorporated. Uruguay, a country that since the late 80s has expressed a desire to be closer to the two largest neighbors, and Paraguay, a state with which the others had a kind of historical debt due to the destruction caused by the Triple Alliance in the Paraguay War, and so the southern common market was born. Since its origin, the bloc has gone through important phases. There have been advances and setbacks, especially with regard to its institutional architecture. In the commercial sphere, the bloc has made significant progress for many years. On the other hand, macroeconomic coordination ran up against both the problem of asymmetry between its partners, as well as the mismatches of exchange rate policies in progress, due to the option of the members' countries for the persistence of preserving full autonomy in the respective decision-making processes. Upon completing 30 years, and despite many comings and goings in its trajectory, it's undeniable that Mercosur has brought important results to its partners, going beyond the strictly economic domain. At the political level, for example, the significance of the Ushuaia Protocol in 1998 is remarkable, which introduced the democratic clause in the bloc and enshrined respect for democratic franchises as a necessary condition to be admitted and to remain a full member. Based on this document, Paraguay and Venezuela were suspended in 2012 and 2017, respectively. One great achievement of the bloc is definitely the free movement of the state members' populations inside the bloc territory, 
which means that a Brazilian like me can move to Argentina or Uruguay or Paraguay or Chile, live, study, work there and have the same rights as any national. And an Argentinian, uh, an Uruguayan, a Paraguayan can do the same here in Brazil. Did you know that we don't even need to use our passports to travel to the state members' territories? My simple RG, for example, will suffice. In order to make this exchange smoother, our countries have even signed an agreement to accept our diplomas inside the bloc. So if I have a degree in medicine here in Brazil, I can be a doctor in Argentina, in Chile, in Paraguay, in Uruguay, and so on. The bloc is looking for new trade possibilities, and one partnership it has been fighting to make is with the European Union. Currently, the agreement with the European Union has come under extensive pressure from countries such as France and Austria, which are largely opposed to its ratification, notably because of the irresponsible positions taken by the government of Jair Bolsonaro on the environmental issue. The understanding negotiated between the blocs has rules on trade and sustainable development. It is known, however, that part of the criticism of the agreement has been made by representatives of the French agricultural sector, which is known to be protectionist and opposed to the premised opening to Mercosur. In addition to the agreement with the European Union, an agreement was concluded with the European Free Trade Association or the EFTA, while negotiations are underway with countries such as Canada, South Korea, Indonesia, Singapore, among others. These efforts seek to guarantee trade concessions for Mercosur that expand the presence of its members in global exchanges, especially in a context marked by widespread uncertainty about the multilateral negotiations of the World Trade Organization, or the WTO. Under the leadership of President Bolsonaro in Brazil and his mismatch with the Argentinian president, Mercosur has unfortunately been put to second plan in Brazil's foreign policy, a scenario that tends to change with the Brazilian elections of next October. But I'd like to know, did you know about the existence of Mercosur prior to this video? Do you belong to any of the Mercosur's member states? How does this integration make it easy or hard for you when you travel? Leave a comment down below. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to smash the like button to make this video more and more popular and maybe offer to other people who are interested in the topic. Also, make sure to subscribe and become one more of these people who are crazy for Brazil. And also, Click on the bell button to receive notifications every time a new video is out. Also, don't forget to go visit us on Instagram, the account that appears right here, okay? And uh, have access to content of the backstage and much more, like pictures of my country, uh, curiosities and stuff. Thank you so much for being with us up until now. See you next time.